Hey, it's John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. And, you know, we are now practically, it's not even social distancing now. It's like, I'm way down the street. It's all distancing. It's super distance. Like, I don't even know if we're side by side or, you know, what part of the screen I'm on. But anyway, (laughs) we're doing the responsible thing. And, uh, but we're still doing this once a week. And I'm glad that we got a great response for, uh, our really weirdly uh, staged video from last week. We yep. were like yep. on each, like one side of the table, like, no, you stay over there. Don't get near me. Yeah, but now things are more serious. So we're super serious. We're sticking to our, our own studios. Yes, here we are, I am in uh, Studio K. And uh, this is where I'll remain until they tell me it's okay to, you know, go near that guy. But so we're back for the attack. With another, this I wonder if that's gonna be backwards. It it's perfect. Backwards. It's fine. Um, maybe because I'm looking at the mirror view. But I got myself some German Polaris hops, and I've wanted to uh, brew with this for a smash beer for a while now um, because it's supposed to have a pretty strong minty aroma and flavor. But well, you know, that's the whole reason why we do these smash beers. Yep. Because we want to know if that's true or not. So the sitch is I get, I make a one gallon batch. I take two pounds of a two row American pale malt. I, um, I uh, mill that, I put that into a bag. I take two gallons of water. I do like one uh, uh, batch uh, uh, mash. I don't sparge it. It's just like, it just all goes into the kettle. You know, whatever I can get out, I get out. And that boils for an hour, and I take one ounce of hops, and this one comes from uh, Northern Brewer, uh, German Polaris hops. The alpha printed on this packet says 4.4%. Oh, wow. Uh, it, when I've done research, it's like high alpha acids. So I wonder if this is a misprint. We'll just throw that over there. <laughs> Forget that. But that changed. It's either 44 or like <laughs> 14 or something. The decimal point. Uh, over any case so I take the one ounce I divide it four ways and uh, I did it the the normal way I did I actually put in a quarter of an ounce at 60 minutes to go in the boil uh, saved another quarter through that at 15 through another quarter at flame out and then saved a quarter for dry hopping these said uh, dry hops actually went in uh, at day three of fermentation and the whole thing got kegged uh, at the end of the week, in, in like the seventh day of fermentation, I was like, that's it. It's all going into the keg. And it's go. all getting carbonated. And a few days later, here we are. And uh, we're tasting it. So with that, yeah, it's nice and, you know, uh, yellowy, uh, straw colored and stuff. Nice uh, uh, carbonation because I set that thing to like 30 PSI for three straight days. And then I uh, bottle it up. Uh, drove over to Mike's house, left it on his porch, and said, uh, sanitize this so I don't get you sick. Not that I'm sick, but you never know because I could be asymptomatic, you know. Anyway, you're drinking it. <laughs> don't be scared. Uh, you're drinking it. Tell me what you think. Well, I fully sanitized my bottle, uh, not with Star Sand, but we're not going to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, uh, the uh, first initial couple tastes, I was like, oh, this is very interesting. It's, it's a little unique. But so the overall aroma and flavor that I get, it's sort of like if you've ever had like dried lime, like, um, like a dried lime um, wedges or uh, lime zest a little bit. It's just not, it's very non-distinct fruitiness. As I've been drinking it, So this idea of like a minty thing, I mean, um, I guess it's minty, but to me, there's just like this, every sip is just this growing, increasing amount of just um, citrus pith, Hmm. right? It's just, that's all I'm getting really is like a, like just nondescript citrus and mostly the white stuff between the the fruit and the zest. That's all (laughs) I'm really getting, which I guess, if you were a marketing company, um, you'd call that mint. I don't know. I'm, I'm not getting like mint, but it's, I, I get, a, I get a little bit of uniqueness. I mean, there's a little bit of like, almost like a eucalyptus in there, which yeah. might be mint to me. 
Um, but it's just mostly nondescript citrus, uh, but very pithy. Yeah, I'm getting spicy. I'm getting herbal. And then I think that eucalyptus, I would say menthol. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not meant to, like, we had warrior hops, and I, I think if we harken back to when we sure. did, um, I don't know, do we do a smash of, of warrior hops? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we said, wow, there's like a mint component to this. Yeah. I would not say this has a mint component. There is that, there is a, it's almost there, mint's component. It's like, almost there, yeah. yeah. Well, mint it's also, it's like all, all, almost citrus it's like almost yeah. a couple things yeah right it's 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 like moving it's not citrus and it's not yeah. mint it's like in between and it's pithy um yeah. and then at the other side of it i think that it's that menthol it's not, not that i yeah know menthol cigarettes all that well but uh, that's when i when i think about it that's uh that's what i got so yeah i don't know I, this is this hop is a pass for me <laughs> I was gonna ask you, like, where would you put this? I mean, certainly this would be a bittering hop. Um, I, I could, I could see, like, actually, like when I was pouring it, there was this uh, waft, almost like a lager-ish waft, and I just wonder if that's just, you know, German hops, like uh, an aspect of it, and I think that's what I was smelling. Yeah. Because um, I don't definitely like an ale yeast, you know, yep. uh, use US05 for these things. Not like there's any yeast characteristic coming from the beer. It was just definitely like a a hop derived yeast. I'm sorry, hop derived aroma essence that um, that came out of the out of the spigot. And I was yeah. like, huh, that's weird. Um, but certainly, I could see this being like a if you use it in small amounts, especially if we're if we're having alpha acids of like pushing twenty percent or something. Yeah. Uh, I would think that this would be a, a good one for like a, a, a lager style or like some some of those you know cleaner styles where the like the bittering is is important and you'd want to have something like maybe not that amount uh, not a lar a large amount added yeah. to the beer but certainly enough to like kind of balance it with the, the malt and, and the clean uh, flavors that come with a lager style. Yeah, I think I'd want to experiment with it first and like another small batch is just a bittering hop mm -hmm. and see how much of the weird flavors do or do not carry over uh, before I committed myself to a batch with it, with other hops, Yeah. maybe other more prized or slightly more expensive hops. You know, I, it's just, um, I don't know. That pale ale that we had last time that I brewed, I, I almost would rather just get my bitterness from something like a Columbus or a Warrior or a Magnum or something and just, go for it i only the only thing is and, it, and it's probably because the hop is layered throughout it but i just have this lingering growing it's almost not bitterness it's on the roof of my mouth it's like it's like citrus pith and it just keeps <laughs> growing as i drink it and I, it's not, it doesn't it's not uh it's not wildly unpleasant but for me it's not something that i'm like yay it certainly lingers you know? yeah it lingers a long time so I wonder sure. if it's because I have, I was brewing with a hop that uh, has a very high alpha acid percentage. Maybe. <laughs> so, all right, man. Well, that's that. It's Polaris hops. I know that people have uh, brewed with this, but certainly I was excited about it back in 2013 when I heard about it. I mean, it was just released in 2012. Um, but now, I don't know. It, it's, it's not as, uh, again, in other, um, other uh, beers, maybe that mint comes out more, but in the one that I brewed, not that minty. Yeah. And I actually would say Warrior uh, gave us more of a, a minty uh, flavor and aroma than this hop does. Yep. I don't even think that's like a leading thing for Warrior. Mm -mm. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. This is what we got, and this is what we're talking about tonight. You know, separated by a, probably a, you know, a black line in the stream. This is going to be very interesting to see. This is, you know, the first time. Not like we actually tried this beforehand to see yeah. how it came out. It's going to come out the way it's going to come out. We're going right. to it I could, <laughs> I could pull this into editing and be like, nope, no, no video this week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try again tomorrow. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. All right, that's that. Polaris hops. Let us know what you think if you've brewed with this hop. 
Have you been satisfied with it? Uh, do you think it's great? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, find us on Instagram. I will follow you back. I've been following people back who follow Woo. up. Rude Ash Dudes, all one word. The dash is, is actually written out and uh, we do post a picture every once, um, I think once a quarter at this point, but we'll, we'll post more. We're on fire. I got, I got all this, uh, all these uh, brewing ingredients uh, being shipped to my house like in the next few days. So maybe I'll just take more pictures and put I them got up. a nice box full myself. Yeah, there you go. All right. For John and Mike, brewdashsuits.com. Stay safe and brew on. Cheers. <laughs>